welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. A couple of months ago, I made a custom rig to add an SSD and cooling to a Raspberry Pi 4. Since that time, many people have got in touch to suggest alternative solutions, and these include the TerraPi. This is a vertical mount for a Raspberry Pi 4 from a Enux 3D, who also sell a compatible USB adapter and fan. So, let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the TerraPi, which as you'll see in a second is a kit of 3D printed parts and mounting hardware for supporting a Raspberry Pi vertically alongside a 2.5 inch drive. Here I'm going to be using the TerraPi with this 2GB Raspberry Pi 4 and this 120GB Kingston SSD, although you can use the TerraPi with any Raspberry Pi and any 2.5 inch drive. I purchased this kit from Edux 3D, where a TerraPi with a fan hat for use with one 2.5 inch drive currently sells for €7.49 plus taxes, which is about $8.87 or £6.68. And there's also a dual 2.5 inch drive version of a TerraPi, which sells for €10.14, which is about $12 or £9. Anyway, let's open up the box, look inside, nice straightforward one this even for me. There we are, aha, straight inside, and there's various uh, bubble wrap, we can uh, pop that later on. And in here, let's get it out, oh there's even instructions. We've got, uh, as you can see, the 3D printed parts and uh, instructions for putting it together. You might look at those, you never know. But as you can see in here, we've got the plastic parts and we've got a bag I can't open. There we are, I can get inside, there we are. And uh, there we are, parts there and uh, lots of uh, mounting hardware. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Lots and lots of bits. Those are all the bits we need to put together to support the, the Pi with uh, the SSD. However, we also need a couple of other things. So let's flick across this box of uh, accessories, a nice anonymous brown cardboard box. Let's open it up inside we find. Aha, there is a fan. This is a 40 millimeter by 10 millimeter thick Fan, 5 volt fan. I paid uh, four euros 49 plus taxes for this, which is what, about $5.91 or £4.49. But you could use any 40 millimeter 5 volt fan. And then under here, you can see we've got an IC box SATA to USB adapter, which uh, cost, what was this, about, uh, oh, if I find my figures, it was a uh, €7.99, which was about $9.46 or £7.13. And let's just get in with a standing and knife up here, if we can get in there. How do I get in? Is that the right thing? Oh, I think it is, yes, that'll get me in. And there we are. And the great thing about this is that the cable comes out at the end. This is USB 3 to uh, SATA to go onto our uh, two and a half inch drive. It'll just flick onto the end uh, like, uh, is it this way around? I think it is that way around like that. But the wire is coming out the side. And that's really neat. And normally on adapters like this, if I can find one over here, this is the adapter I normally use and it comes out the end and it makes things much bulkier so it's really neat you've got an adapter with uh, something coming out the end. So uh, this is all we need to put the TerraPi together so I think we'll now get on with some construction. So we're now in assembly mode and the first thing we need to do is to take the SSD and to attach with these four screws these mounting points which go there, there there and there, I think all the construction is based around the uh, drive. So I'll put those screws in. And uh, there we are, that seems nice and uh, solid. Uh, and now, let's get them level, I hope. And now we need to take effectively everything and mount it on top of that. So the Raspberry Pi will go on top of there like that. And then there'll be some little uh, risers here going on there. And there and there, and also there, and then the fan hat goes on top of uh, here, and then screws go into that. But uh, we need first of all to put the fan on top of there, and uh, unfortunately there were no screws or bolts or anything provided to uh, fasten the, the, uh, the fan to here, but I do have some available, so I'm just going to get on with putting the, the fan onto uh, the fan hat up top plate. There we are, the fan is now attached onto there, these little bits are rolling around. Now I need to bring this back again 
and uh, in theory it now all will uh, go together. Put our writers back in and uh, the weird thing is that it now goes together using these screws here. So these screws will go down into this plastic. Uh, effectively these, these bolts will, will self tap which is in my view not a good idea. It would be much better if we had nuts and bolts holding this together rather than self tapping into 3D printed plastic but uh, I guess it will work. We'll find out in a second. Let's just put it together. And uh, there we are. It has gone together, I have to admit, very securely. Although personally I would still favour a nut and bolt solution. I think that would be a much better way to hold things uh, together. Oh, I've done it the wrong way around, haven't I? I haven't got the right things for the Jeep I opened. Oh dear, I better switch it around. There we are, that's uh, better. And we can now attach the uh, wires for the fan, pin uh, uh, there, pin four is that, and pin six for uh, the ground rail like that. And then now what we need to do is to mount this thing onto the base. And this I think is a very clever piece of a design because here is the base and basically it takes advantage of the fact you've got screw holes in the side of a, a two and a half inch drive. So what happens is a bit like this, that's how it's all going to mount up. And to do that, we simply go around here, if I can keep you on camera, and put the screws in there. And uh, there we are. And uh, I do have to admit, this is a very solid construction. So let's just give you a side angle like this, so you can see the thing in its uh, full glory. It really is a rather nice. This we look around the back, of course, you can just see the SSD like that. Oh, and I must add in the USB adapter, which will do via the magic of filmmaking. And here we are, the TerraPi rig is now all ready to be put to the test. Greetings. Here I am back again. We've now got the TerraPi all connected up, so let's turn on the power. And there we are. Oh, it's got blue LEDs in the fan. That's rather nice, isn't it? Anyway, let's transition across to the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. Here we are. And in fact, a little time jump there. This desktop has been running a little period of time to allow the Pi to settle down to a, get to a, an even temperature, which seems to be about 37, 38 degrees running with the uh, Terra Pi. And uh, I've got a terminal window here. So we open up the terminal window and we do an LSBRK, list block devices we can see that our uh, SSD is working okay. There we are, SDA1 is there. Hardly a surprise, we've got a SATA SSD connected by USB 3 adapter to a Raspberry Pi, but I thought we'd just check it was there. And uh, I've also installed HD parameters on this Pi, so we can go to that and run that to get the speed of the SSD via this interface, which of course depends on the interface the Pi and the SSD. It's normally about 300 megabytes a second and it's, oh, that's actually pretty good, 317 megabytes a second. Let's try it again, let's do a, be wild, let's do two different results. If it's wild, wildly different, we'll be very surprised. But anyway, what's it showing? 316, I think we can safely say it runs at about 316, 17 megabytes a second with the interface we've got there on the TerraPi rig. So, what I'm going to do now is to clear the screen, because I think we should also test out the temperatures of the TerraPi. We can see it's of idle state up there, but I've got here my temp test SH script, which I've used many times before to test out different cooling solutions on a Raspberry Pi 4. And just to like, basically let you know what's going on, it's a bash script, clears the screen, has a little loop, uh, which runs seven times, which takes a temperature measurement, stresses out the CPU using sysbench to factor prime numbers to a value of 25,000, continues through the loop, and takes a final temperature measurement on the end. So we get eight temperature measurements with a couple of minutes of stressing out the pi happening between each measurement. So if we go down here, it should be there in this uh, directory already. There it is, and I think I've probably got it in the buffer, haven't I, somewhere? Where has it gone? It'd be quicker to type it out, wouldn't it? There we are, let's run the script. And uh, there it is. So we're starting at 36. So we'll now speed on through so we can get the results of this test to compare with other Raspberry Pi 4 cooling solutions. 
And there we are, the test has finished. And the results are very respectable, stabilizing in the mid 50s. That's a very good temperature to run a Raspberry Pi at at full load. This said, if we put these results onto a table showing other Raspberry Pi 4 cooling solutions I've tried in the past, things like a Noctua fan and a small heatsink, the Pimeroni fan shim, the amazing ice tower, and the Flerk passive cooling case, you'll see that the, the Terra Pi is not beating any of these solutions, even the Flerk case manages to stabilize at about the same temperature. And clearly the ice tower wins, it always does, it's a fantastic cooler, with the Pimeroni fan shim and an Optura fan and heatsink also beating the Terra Pi in terms of cooling performance. And before some of you start typing it in the comments, yes, what this suggests to me is that we need to take a small heatsink and an Optura fan to mount them on the Terra Pi and to repeat the test. So, your assumed wish has been my command, and here we are back again with the TerraPi fitted with an Octua 5 volt fan, the same fan I've used in many of my other Raspberry Pi 4 cooling rigs. And before I put the fan on, I also put a small heatsink on the Raspberry Pi 4, so we're testing Noctua fan with small heatsink on the TerraPi. So, if we go back to the Raspberry Pi desktop, here we are ready to run the test script again, and uh, here we go. And so now let's speed on until the end of this test. And there we are, it's finished. And as you can see, we've knocked about 10 degrees off the temperature by moving to a Noctua fan with a small heatsink. And if we put those results onto the table, you can see what's going on here is that the TerraPi is now performing almost identically to when we had a Noctua fan and heatsink on a different Raspberry Pi 4 rig, which I guess is what we would expect. So we proved here if you want to, you can run a TerraPi with very, very good temperatures. You just have to choose the right fan and also run it with a small heatsink on your Raspberry Pi. As we've seen in this video, the TerraPi is a very neat vertical mounting system for the Raspberry Pi 4. And personally, I also always like to see products from makers for makers coming to market, 3D printed products like the TerraPi coming to market. I always think that's really cool. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.